Hey friends, it's April Holly Smith. And today I want to take you through creating a super duper simple and super, super cheap uh, chicken pot pie uh, from homemade. So right now I have a package of chicken tenders and you saw this package was a dollar. I did get it on Markdown. But what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use these because it's what I have. But you can use any kind of chicken. You can use deboned chicken. You can use shredded chicken. You can use chicken breast. You can use leftover chicken thighs that nobody ate. Anything is just fine. And you're going to notice that I cut this up pretty small. And the reason for that is the smaller the chunks are, the more um, evenly distributed it is in the the dish and it makes it feel like there's more chicken even when you're not using very much so you can see i am gonna cut out this one piece of like sinewy uh fat uh silver skin from the chicken tenders that's the only part of the chicken tender that is any kind of trouble so go ahead and just prepare your chicken and because my chicken is raw i'm gonna have to cook it if you're using some deboned chicken that you had left over from you know, Saturday night to dinner or something like that, you would be able to just use it straight away. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to cut this chicken up. Like I said, I just really wanted to show you the size of the, the chicken chunks that I'm using so that you understand exactly what I'm doing and why. So something else that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a half a bag of frozen mixed vegetables from Save-A-Lot, which costs $1 for the whole bag. So essentially 50 cents worth of vegetables. But again, just like the chicken, you don't have to use exactly the same vegetables I'm using. This is a great way to use up the broccoli, the cauliflower, the carrots, the potatoes, any kind of vegetables that you have, green beans that say you have like corn and green beans, you know, sometimes I have just like a scoop or two left from dinner this is another great way to use that up so don't feel like you have to use exactly the same thing that I'm doing I'm gonna show you how to do it really fast and really simple but this is also a great way to clean out your refrigerator and no one's gonna know that that's what you did um, you're also gonna see that I'm using a packet of gravy you don't have to use a packet if you want to make a roux from homemade, uh, you know, from butter and flour and uh, some chicken broth or um, other beef broth, you know, liquid that you had in your freezer or from, you know, Tuesday night's chicken, that's fine. If you want to do that from a can of broth, that's fine. You can get a can of broth for 50 cents at Aldi's. That's acceptable. If you have a can of, um, you know, chicken gravy or beef gravy or pork gravy, any kind of gravy, that is going to be just fine to use too. So I want you to know that, yeah, I'm going to do it a certain way, but it's really about showing you the technique and letting you know that you can use anything that you have available. And that's part of what makes this such a cheap dinner. And it's part of why it's so good because it just really redoes the leftovers. So your family will not even feel like they're eating the leftovers. And isn't that a great trick? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and get this chicken uh, in the pan to fry. So I have my filling going here. You saw that I cut up my chicken and I did cut it up as kind of small as possible. And the reason for that is you just get more chicken in every bite that way. It's the same amount of chicken, but just more in every bite. So my chicken is cooked all the way through and I've added my frozen vegetables, just a half a bag, so about eight ounces. 
and I'm just essentially trying to get that nice and hot all the way through. So for my sauce, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to use a packet of turkey gravy. Yep, it cost me 25 cents, so it's not expensive. It calls for one cup of water, which I have measured out, and we're going to go ahead and get that in. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these <laughs> good bits off the bottom. Because that's going to make the gravy taste extra better. Instead of it just being plain water, it's going to be something much better. So next we are going to just sprinkle the gravy powder. Now you can use homemade gravy. You want to make a roux or if you want to use some of a can of gravy like a glass or a jar. Oops, I made a mess. Now I'm not making any jello of, I'm making gravy. So we're just going to get that in there. All right. And then I'm going to just use the fanciest of instruments and we're going to stir it. And I did put the water in and kind of let it come up to temperature a little bit. Um, scraped off the bottom, but I wanted that to be good and hot. You can see it's starting to thicken up already. And essentially what we do is we're just going to let this bubble and thicken for a few minutes. Because this is too watery. This is too watery. So That's Evelyn and Lily and making that noise. All right, so it's starting to thicken up already, and the bubbling, the hotness is going to help that. Please stop. Please stop doing that with the refrigerator. All right. We're just going to stir it a little bit. Oh, I'm going to have to deal with that in a second. Alright, so essentially this is done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it on the heat, but I'm gonna or I'm gonna leave it on this burner. I'm just gonna turn it off and just let it sit. And yeah, it's gonna bubble for a few more minutes, and that's gonna be just fine. So this will continue to thicken essentially without me having to do anything, and I won't burn. I am ready to show you how to make the crust now. And yes, this is gonna be a homemade crust, but it is so simple. You don't have to have Crisco for it. You're not gonna do that cutting stuff where you have to cut the flour into the butter or the shortening. So don't worry about that. It takes all of about five minutes to do. So what I'm doing is I'm using a recipe out of the Ohio Grange cookbook, circa, I'm trying to see what year this is. 2002 <laughs> um, and on page 347 it's called corn oil pie crust and I will get a, um, a photo of this and insert it for you so this is the quickest easiest pie crust that I have found where it just literally takes like two minutes to do so I have my bowl uh, that I'm gonna mix in and the first thing it needs is one cup of unsifted flour so just flour is essentially uh, plain old flour. You don't have to get anything complicated here. All right, so one cup of flour, and this is this recipe is going to make either a bottom or a top. It's not going to make both, and you know enough, and you divide it. So it's going to be half a teaspoon of salt, which I'm just sprinkling in third of a cup of corn oil and and then two tablespoons of cold water. And I want you to do those together. So I'm going to put my oil and my water in here. And one, two, got two tablespoons of water in here. And I have my oil and the third of a cup so that you see that. It's really not the end of the world. So if you do that or you overpour or underpour, it's not really a big deal. Get 
Get your fingers out of there. Get your stinky fingers out. So the recipe says for us to mix the corn oil and the water together. So I'm just gonna do that with my handy dandy fork and then you pour it in and you just stir like mad. So this is not like, and essentially you're just gonna make like a dough ball. I mean, it sounds kind of simple, but you can see it's coming together. And see there's wet flour or dry flour. And wherever there's dry flour, I just get the dough ball. <laughs> and and you see how it, it's it, it's just becoming I am probably gonna put in just maybe a a a tad more flour just because I did over pour the the oil a bit. Maybe, maybe I put in like a tablespoon or two and you can see it just, I mean, it sucked it right up. It has like the consistency almost of like a loose sugar cookie dough. So if that helps you, great. And if it doesn't, that's okay. It should look like this. Okay. Lillian. Actually, I'm gonna put in just a tad more I want it to be a little stiffer. And again, it's because I over poured on the oil, not because the recipe is flawed. Oh, that's much better. Okay. That's more of what it should, I feel like it should be like. Again, still a loose, stop Lillian, stop. Do you need to go to your room? All right, so. Okay, we're gonna just roll it into like a dough ball and yeah, it's gonna be pretty oily. It's just the way it is. I'm gonna stick that back in there. We're gonna get our um, wax paper out and we're just gonna roll it. So what I did is I laid out my wax paper and I got my um, rolling pin out. And so you need two pieces of wax paper and essentially one to go down to protect your surface and one to go on the top to protect your rolling pin. So we're just gonna take this and I know it's real technical, right? <laughs> you just want to go for a big, oh man, that was not what I wanted to do. I'm going to get a new piece because I tore that with my ring. Darn it. Darn it. Okay, so here. Peels right off. Can you put this in the trash? All right, so. And of course you are seeing this live with toddlers. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna literally roll this out. You're not looking for a thickness, um, cause a lot of times they'll like, a recipe will say roll it out to a quarter, blah, 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 or an eighth or what, no, don't bother doing that. We're not that complicated. This is not like an award-winning fair recipe or you know, like something that Aunt Margie took to the grave. No, no, no. Clearly it's something, there's a lot of hands that are touching. You're gonna get hurt, honey, because I'm... Did you touch it? Was it funny? Did it feel funny? Yeah. All right, so here's how you measure it. This is the totally technical, complicated baking way of doing it. Look, it's big enough. See how it, it fits? That's how you know it's done. <laughs> Please stop. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our top piece off and we're gonna reuse that. Stop, stop, stop. All right, oh, no, no, you're messing it up, guys, come on. <sighs> you're gonna have, to, so this is totally exactly how it is with toddlers. I'm just gonna re-roll that out to make it like nice and smooth. You need to get your hands down to your side and stop touching this. Do you understand? All right, now. If I keep the toddler hands out, what we're going to do is totally pick it up. It's going to stick. See, it's sticking. Oh, that was louder than I expected. Uh, and we're just going to put it right on. Alright, 
Now, I know this is not like a traditional pie crust. You're gonna go, but you can make it in like literally five minutes. And it takes like no room. Now, it is gonna be a little bit of a procedure to get this off. Just kind of making sure that it's touching the glass. And then I'm just going to look for a good place to start peeling and peel it off. Now, is this going to be perfect? Good Lord, no. And is that okay? Of course it is. And the reason that it's okay is because it's Tuesday and it's dinner. It's not an award winning thing. It's not meant to be anything that complicated. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just cutting away some of this excess because then it's just easier to handle for me. You do whatever you feel like works for you. So I'm just going to start peeling it. You can feel it. I'm peeling it. I think I can peel it with you. No, I think that, I think maybe the next one we can peel. This glass is so pretty. It is pretty. It's purple, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so. It's you can see if you keep a straight edge underneath, it does peel a lot easier. And if your pie crust breaks, don't don't worry. It's it it's really it's okay. Because as you see, it just kind of pushes right back together. And once you get it started, it comes right. Please stop touching it, girls. It comes right off. And I have lots of it here. You can just use your fingers. All right, that's enough, honey. I need you to not do it. I'm trying to do it like you. I know you're trying to do it like me, but please stop because, Evelyn, please stop. Please, I wanna do it. I know you wanna do it. Let me, let me do this to the point where I can get you some, okay? I need to make sure there's enough. All right, and so, you know, I'm just kind of doing kind of a patch job, I guess is what you would call it. It's not anything. Whoa. You need to be careful with those scissors, honey. I don't want anyone to get hurt in the making of this pie. I only want people to enjoy this pie. <laughs> nope, not yet. When I have extra, I'll give it to you, okay? Okay. But I got some stuff I got to fill in, so... I don't know how much extra I'll have. No, Alright, so no, no. this is totally good enough. Alright, I need you to stop putting your fingers in it. Do you understand? Alright, now I'm going to move away and I'm going to go get something hot. And when I come back, you need to be clear of this pie. Do you understand? Alright, so I have my filling and it's just been kind of, it's not cool but it's like not like fresh from the fire either see it's pretty steamy so essentially we're just gonna make sure our chicken's a little even and uh all right so that is what the inside of the pie looks like that's gonna be hot girls okay all right so now we just need to whip up the lid so we're just gonna literally make a second pie all right, so I have my, my top on, and I'm just gonna peel it back. Now, here's something with this. Usually, I have a ginormous crack in it across the top. And you know what, that's really okay. It actually saves me a step. Um, it saves me, it vents the pie without me having to do it. So, again, I'm just kind of being a little, not careful, but I mean, I'm just, I'm taking my time. I'm being quick, but I'm taking my time because the whole point of this um, recipe is that it's easy and it's fast. So you want, you do want to kind of press it together. Here, 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 here you go. Have some. And there's a couple pieces over here that are a little short. So I'm just gonna kind of put something here. But if this pie is not completely sealed, it's not the end of the world. Um, it is better if it's sealed and the reason for that is it will tend to boil over less if you make your pie crust a little bigger or if you chill it for a little while yeah there you go so this is what your pie is going to look like now um, I'm gonna need in here 
Hold on. Think I'm going to take now, because I did not develop a giant hole in my crust, I need to put some vents. And what that does is that essentially allows the steam out okay. because it's going to boil inside the crust. And that's okay. That's what you want. Now, essentially what we're going to do is, okay, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. All right. So also because your pie filling is really warm, it's going to make this even more liquidy than it would be. You need to stop touching it. You cannot have it back. So, pro tip, put this on a cookie sheet and then put it in the oven. That way if it does leak or toddler fingers make a mess, it will leak out onto that and it's easier to clean than your oven. So, this is my pie in the oven on the cookie sheet. And what we're gonna do is we are going to set this for 350 and we're gonna bake it for about 45 minutes. So, all right, now something else that I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pie crust shield on mine. If you don't have one of these, essentially you make one out of tin foil and put it around the edge so that the crust doesn't burn. So let me show you. This is what a pie crust shield is. And in theory, that should go over the little handles, but it doesn't. So just make a thing out of aluminum foil and put it over the edges and that'll keep your pie crust from burning on the edges that's a pro tip right along with that cookie sheet business any pie you make do the cookie sheet so i just want to show you what the pie looks like i've served Yay. some up look lily's already in it i've got a dish here and then i have also a dish on the table for evelyn and it is also going to be super gamma hot when you serve it, so please blow on it up. And that is what, yeah, it's hot, huh? That's what hot pie for dinner looks like. Ah, ah, ah.